Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Starship Gaming. Um, first off, I want to acknowledge I haven't been uploading for the past week. I've had uh, a bit of bad news come. I recently um, had a death in the family. I had a family member pass away. So it's been kind of rough, and I haven't had any time Plus, I've been busy with uh, my shop. As you know, if you've watched my past episodes, I own a gaming shop, and um, it keeps me very busy. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, let's get on with the episode. Today's episode is about why the Sega Saturn failed. Now, the Sega Saturn was a console that was released by Sega in early 1995 in the United States and it was its release was a bit of a controversy because it caught everyone off guard well that bit of being off guard kind of sunk the system where it stood and let me explain how that started let me set the picture it was E3 1995, and Sega decided that they were going to announce that the Sega Saturn was going to be released in stores immediately. And that caught all the retail, like certain retailers off guard. The big guys got all the, you know, the Sega Saturn's first little guys like KB Toys. They were so PO'd that throughout the rest of the Sega Saturn's lifespan, they just refused, like flat out refused to carry it. And it wasn't a very good move on Sega, on, on the part of Sega's uh, well, let me rephrase that. It was not a good move on the part of Sega. Um, of course, the Genesis and the Super Nintendo was out at the time. But there was another major player that was, you know, just on the scene. And um, that was when Sega had finally met their match. Right after the um, Sega panel announced that it was going to be released in stores immediately, that shipments were already there. PlayStation came and did their panel, and here's what happened. Sony's head of development had this big, huge speech prepared, and he was called to the stage, sat his notes down, and uttered the words that will forever be remembered in gaming. 299. And forever, PlayStation cemented themselves as the dominant competition against Sega and Nintendo. More importantly, Sega in this case. As Sega Saturn was planned for a fall 1995 release, they had wanted to get, a, uh, get their foot in the door, so to speak, and get uh, into the market before Sony could. And this backfired majorly. No retailers were prepared, like I had mentioned earlier. It PO'd a bunch of businesses, uh, especially the small guys like KB Toys and you know a bunch of others. And they were like, no, we're not going to carry the Sega Saturn. So what happened was uh, there was, you know, it was around, yes, but it just flat, flat out failed because of that. Nobody liked it. Um, you know, nobody wanted it, and PlayStation was able to penetrate the market, and, you know, it was just cheaper, as the Sega Saturn was announced for $399 during E3 95. Um, you know, $100, the Sega Saturn was $100 more. Now, do the math, as Atari Jaguar had once said. <laughs> um, the PlayStation 1 was the cheaper option, had a better selection of games, even though some games were, you know, you had some games that were ported um, between the two. 
uh, for example, the Lost World Jurassic Park uh, was ported both for um, Sony PlayStation and um, Sega Saturn and Tomb Raider and Resident Evil. But uh, Sony came out on top in the end, um, even though Sega Saturn, um, you know, Sega Saturn all around was a better system, but Sony just, you know, they just couldn't compete with Sony, and Sony had, had, they, they they really had their stuff together, they were really fought out, and that's how they were able to defeat, um, Sega at, you know, in the, the gaming market, and that continued over until, you know, into the Dreamcast, which they easily defeated with the PS2, and, um, so on and so forth until Sega was ran out of the console market altogether and just developed software. So, why did it fail? Well, anyone could say there's a number of reasons. One is poor sales, um, competition, and also another reason could it be its selection of games. Um, some of the games were good, some were bad. Um, some of the games. To be honest, I love the Sega Saturn. I never owned one when I was younger, but I bought one used years later. I actually had gotten one at a yard sale for $2 um, because it didn't have any hookups or controllers. I was able to track those down easily with the help of um, just local stores and whatnot at the time. Uh, this was probably about 10 years ago or so um, from the recording of this video. <laughs> but... Um, a lot of it had to do with with the sales and the advertising. The advertising was really weird, and I don't think it really helped its cause. If you want to know what I mean with the advertising, go online, or especially go on YouTube here, and watch some of those, and you'll see why it either makes you want to buy one, or it just makes you want to run away in fear. Um, you'll find out what I mean when you do a little bit more digging around for information <laughs> um so yeah those were really the reasons why it failed was you know sony completely obliterated them in the competition like they just couldn't compete and of course nintendo 64 coming onto the market for kids that was the final nail in the coffin for sega they they you know game over man but Competition really was the reason why it failed, and consumers not being interested in it. Um, you know, like I said, advertising had a lot to do with it. So that's really what it all boiled down to. But I hope you liked today's episode. Um, if you are a Sega Saturn fan, tell us in the comments below. I especially am a Sega Saturn fan. I absolutely love the games. Um, even though, you know, like I said, some people didn't like them, but I absolutely loved them. Especially, one of my favorite games I'm going to mention right now, just to get this out of the way, since we're talking about Sega Saturn, is Bug. I've always been a fan of Bug. Um, but, uh, yeah, tell us in the comments below if you, uh, love Sega Saturn, or if you ever had a Sega Saturn, or have one, and tell us what you think about it. Um, remember to like and subscribe if you want to get notifications when we post new videos. Um, click on the bell. And until next time, I will talk about something interesting. Um, now I want to do make a uh, I want to make a quick announcement. Um, because of my busy schedule, we were planning to do videos um, for this month, May 2019. Um, on Sunday, Monday, and Friday. Um, I'll probably be posting more infrequently, so if my videos will either be released on a Friday, Sunday, or Monday. There may be one per week, there may be two, there may even be three. It depends on how busy I am with my schedule. But I just thought I'd let everybody know uh, that everything's okay. <laughs> um, I've had some people uh, ask me, and everything's cool. Um, so uh, until next time, I'll see you.